Hello, everybody, and welcome to week four of the English for English as a medium of instruction for academics MOOC and our final update video for you. Mm. And it's been a fantastic experience for us so far. Mm. Um, lots of the the list of comments that I would normally have at this stage, I think you have answered very well on the steps. I think there are a lot of really good uh, pieces of advice and ideas that you've put on the steps. So thank you for them. And I encourage you to read back through some of the amazing comments that mm. we've had. We've been mm. really impressed. Mm. So mm. thank you very much for yes. everything you've done. But now we're going to try and sum up everything very nicely in a short video. So Yes. Um, I really don't know where to start, actually. But I guess the most important thing is um, on this step, when I, I went to have a look at it, um, um, already there were some lovely comments from you and I really was very touched by um, a lot of the lovely things that you said and it really means a lot doesn't it Rob um, so thank you very very much indeed for those lovely comments mm. and as Rob, Rob said um, you have as a group interacted with one another exceptionally well um, on this occasion so we almost feel that we've had less to do to sort of suggest things to because the suggestions and the tips and the good practice and so on has been coming from the group itself um, and we've largely been observing haven't we mm. we have got a few things to say of course um, but it really has been an exceptionally good run of our course um, so Thank you for being an ex exceptionally good and diligent and um, committed group of people. Mm, yeah. um, I suppose we ought to go back into the content of week four and just pick out um, a few things. Um, I read with great interest you know, the comments that you made on the use of idioms and, and how we can't prevent ourselves from using idioms. So. I'd hate to suggest that you know we should never use idioms, but just monitor ourselves when we use idiomatic language, and and just be aware that that it could be problematic. I don't think we can really eliminate idiomatic speak completely, can we, Rob? But well, and idioms <laughs> exist in all languages, and they do we're, in all languages. Yes, we're all so. monkeys in different cages. Really? I, be I believe that's a Brazilian. Is it? A Brazilian idiom. Ah. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, but. perhaps the people from UFMG could correct us on that one. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, that was an interesting step to um, read about. Um, and also, the language that you use to manage your classes. You know the um, the directness of your speak, how directly you tell them, instruct them to do this or that, and um, how you might perhaps with a different group or a smaller group um, say things in a slightly different way. And so we're all, you know, choosing the best types of language to use with our different groups in our context. What appears to be the most appropriate. Um, for us. I've got lots of other things to say, but I don't want to hog, to use an idiom, <laughs> um, um, this particular um, session. So I think I ought, to, I ought to let Rob say something. I'll say something. Thank you, I'm Mary. I'm sure he'll have something to say. I always have something to say. But apparently not as funny as Mary, as one of oh, the yes. comments suggested. Yes, yes. Not sure about that. You were um, very hurt by that, you realise. Yeah, I pride myself <laughs> on my sense of humour. Oh, but, um, <laughs> yes, he's very funny, really. <laughs> After a few years. Um, <laughs> yes. So I wanted to say a couple of things about the content that w I thought it was really good this week and has been consistently good throughout. Yeah. But the, um, I really liked, we, ha we had the scenario where yes. you had groups of students and the scenarios are mostly based on our experiences um, mm. coordinating EMI research and courses with other yeah. universities and these are real scenarios that do occur mm. and I've experienced that one myself where you get quite strong groups that are culturally and linguistically different who congregate with each other 
and then once you've got this situation where the room is polarized so you get these yeah. different groups talking in their first language with each other preferring each other's company what do you do then and i thought my favorite thing about the comments that you had on that step were that i thought the advice that was given was excellent advice when people said oh i've got a lot of you know advice mm -hmm. that i could give you in this situation but equally people who said i'm not sure how or what the best solution is to this situation i also agree with you because mm -hmm. it's a very delicate situation and what you might do to break up those groups could have a negative effect on the other aims that you have in the class so we were talking as well saying mm. you, know, you know the things that you could do you could try but is, there's no definite solution that says this is going to work and i, I like mm. this is why it's important to discuss to increase awareness but to look at all solutions contextually because what you do in that situation is going to work in that situation but not necessarily the next one yes. which is education isn't it it is mm. and if it is possible it might not be possible but if it is possible to introduce the topic with the students just to say you know it might be nice if we could change around our groupings you know just little suggestions but but sometimes you know if the, if the groups are working happily as they are who who are we to actually say you must separate out because we can't know exactly what's going on the dynamism in, in each particular group so perhaps suggest that a change happens or create an activity where some sort of change in the groupings happens as a part of the activity mm. but then you know perhaps it's not the most important thing mm. I think the other the thing most, is the yeah. most important thing is probably yeah. the communication with the students so you know what mm. they want yes. do they want to be in segregated yeah. groups often the answer is no but it's a huge identity choice for someone to walk away from their in group yes. and go and sit with the other, other group, group. Mm -hmm. even if that's what they want. So sometimes they want the teacher to take control mm -hmm. and to mix things up. But again, you can only know that by talking to them mm -hmm. or giving a survey mm -hmm. of some kind. Mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. Another area was the um, intercultural awareness, breaking down stereotypes. In that area, most people said, yeah, I think this is an important part of my job. It's an important element of EMI. But there are a couple of people who also said, I don't think that's my job. My job is to teach material science for example yes and in that situation this is a, a reality that exists in universities that um, some people some topics some educational environments people will feel that's my job and this is part of university life mm. and other people feel that the, the skills that students require need to come from somewhere else and this is where the support comes in this is where mm. wider education um, opportunities, workshops, courses, um, that's where they might be helpful to, to aid the teachers who don't mm. feel it's their job mm. to, to enhance intercultural awareness. Mm. And we shouldn't say people are wrong or right, we have to recognise uh, the different educational contexts. Yes. The different contexts and the boundaries of each person's mm. Mm. Um, commitments and role in different contexts. So once again, it's it's over to you to judge what is appropriate. Mm. And to the institution to mm. offer the student yeah. what they need. And again, those graduate attributes are very important. Mm. Um, one other thing I was going to mention, and then I will allow you to... You'll allow me to speak Allow you again. to right. speak again. Um, I was going to mention that last week we discussed some practical elements and we suggested in the live video it would be good if you could put some practical ideas into the reflection step of week yes. four. Yes. So where the step says reflection, if you add any ideas, we will do the same. Mm. Um, mm. So any ideas for either um, EMI education, so training people yeah. to educate through English, or practical ideas for the lecture, or, lecture or seminar, yes. whatever it may be, that you feel are effective to do. So we've, mm. we've talked a lot about the approach, a lot about ha the principles of education through English in intercultural mm. environments. 
now we can get to the what should we do. Yes. And for the training, just people asked for a suggestion. I think one thing that we both value very much is, is confidence building. And I think when you get a group of people together who are lecturers and you ask them to, to deliver their content, so you know, develop some skills, develop some competence, but building towards sharing what's most interesting in their topic with others, I find it's sometimes almost magical the effect it has on a room of, of colleagues because often we don't really know what our colleagues do mm. and then they present it to us and there's something there that's, that's like, wow, that's really interesting. I'm envious of your job. You get to teach that or you're, you know, yes. you must, it must take a, a yeah. serious brain to know all of that. And I find that the content knowledge can really help build confidence with colleagues um, in terms mm. of you know, helping to deliver the lectures through English. So I, I find that building up towards something where they present the knowledge they have through English, I'd say that's the main mm. sort of giver, if you like. It's, it, most people find a lot of confidence in that and find that they can communicate their topic with other people. Mm. So if we just repeat what you said earlier, that it would be good if you put comments of that nature mm. in that final step. You said reflection, didn't reflection you? Reflection step, yeah. Yes, the reflection step. Um, um, so that it's kind of collected there mm. for anybody who's been following the course to see what these top tips are, the main yeah. points that have come out for you that you would like to share. Mm. Um, with everybody because it is hard I know not everybody we keep saying you know go back and have a look again but we know that people are pressed for time mm. and it's difficult always you know to, to go back and, and find some of the um, glorious tips that are being suggested yeah. by various yeah. people but some of those key ideas collected at the end would be yeah. wonderful Yeah, and also like I said for delivering so things like a student-led yeah. quiz question yes. and answer whatever it may be um, that you find helpful in, in enhancing communication and developing your pedagogy, then that's yes. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, can I, can I speak now? You're allowed now, yeah. Okay, all right then. Um, as I was reading through the comments um, this week, one thing I noticed was the language that a lot of you are using. And I kept reading, um, you know, I've thought about, um, I reflected on, and so on. What else did I see? Um, it, what you said just now made me think and so on. there's a lot of language coming through showing that people are really reflecting on their practice and it's producing changes for people or it's producing you know flashes of insight that very often they're then gone to um, comment upon in, in, in the step um, and if I could just encourage you um, to think more and more about this aspect of our work. I think we like to call ourselves reflective practitioners and this is really what EMI demands of us to be because we've got the skills in teaching and we know a lot about intercultural communication, we know a lot about English now, we're proficient users of the English language, but putting it all together and thinking about how we put it together and really deeply reflecting is for me the way in um, to improving as practitioners really whether we're EMI practitioners or not so that that is a wonderful thing to see as a person you know who has you know been there from the start with Rob um, in, in creating this course to see that people are truly reflecting and sharing that's immense and once again I haven't seen that quite as much on previous courses so well done you know for you and my, my 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 instinct is that people are moving away from firstly thinking about language to to firstly thinking about pedagogy and interaction i think we're moving from saying to doing, if 
if you follow what I'm trying to get across to you, that on many occasions I have felt in the past on previous runs, people were just exchanging a few things, but now they've moved from just language to actual, actually making pedagogy, the way I'm going to deliver my class, number one, how am I going to get this content across to the students? What interactions would be good? How am I going to structure my lesson? And then the language comes in later. And I think this is a tremendous move forward and I am sensing it from a number of people on the course. And I do hope that you will go on to um, share that with, with other people in your institutions. Mm. Mm. I wanted and to talk more about the future, but I can mm. sense that you're wanting to come in here. I'm simply so going to add a, a, a tiny um, comment there to say mm. that language comes later. It, it's yeah. also true that this is a long journey. And yes. even for British people lecturing through English, the language of you as an educator develops every time you teach. Mm. Every year you finish and look back and you think, okay, what did I do? What could I improve? I, I think I was a, a, I'd call myself a stuttering wreck when I first stood in front of people. Uh, Me too. What am I going to teach? I was so nervous. And, and it becomes oh. a performance that's all about you to increase your self-confidence but yeah. then it becomes about the student at some point mm. Mm. you become at some point yes you do uh, move yeah. over you switch yeah. over don't you so this i think a lot of people have also <coughs> recognized that it's a long journey yeah and they're saying what will i do now so that i can reach somewhere years yes. in the future and that's yeah. a good way to look at it because the language comes the language is continually yes. improving the more you do things yeah. so yeah 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 i'm pleased with, that you agree with me absolutely i always okay. agree with you we have it on record now. All right. So thinking about the future, you know, where do you go next and so on? Um, I think I said before that um, one of the things we, we try to do is to give you confidence in your abilities. And it's very hard uh, to do this at a distance. But if we can emphasize once again that, you know, you've, you've been on this journey with us, which is perhaps the first step. Other people have been on the EMI journey a lot longer. But wherever you are, um, please be thinking of what you're going to do next. And please think of the big EMI community, which is growing. It will be growing in your country and it is definitely growing worldwide. So what can you do locally in your um, institution? What, what can you do in, the t in terms of getting groups together, perhaps um, giving a talk about your experiences, passing on the knowledge that you have. What can you do perhaps in your city? There might be several universities in your city or nationally, etc. You know, are there um, conferences that you could go to where you speak about EMI? Are there publications, you know, that you could think about submitting an, an article to? Um, so there's a vast journey ahead of you um, where you can make a very, very valuable contribution to EMI locally and in your country and then internationally. And I know you wanted to speak about astrophysics, didn't you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you wanted to remind me about something. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, you yes. didn't. You said it differently this time, oh, so it's sorry. fine. <laughs> you have made my point worthless. So. Oh, no. It's just, it that, it's just that I, when, I was, when we were talking about what we were going to say today, um, Rob made the po point that it's not just EMI. It's EMI within a certain discipline, such as astrophysics. So it could be a conference, not about EMI, but a conference about astrophysics. Or, or whatever it is, where you, within the, the framework of that conference, talk about delivering your particular um, um, field, in, within your field, you know, in English. Um, and that would be the point. That would be perhaps the new uh, thing that you could make a contribution to. Mm. I think it's a, so a great field because, yeah. because you have particular knowledge of your yes. context and your context 
is probably something that other people don't know so well. Yes. Which means, yeah, it's open. It's open to communicate with others because I think there are yeah. lots of big voices on EMI talking about big pictures, but fewer contextual ideas yes. and understanding coming from localities, which are which would make a much richer picture of of mm. what what to do, mm. what problems exist, what opportunities are there. Yes, and, exactly. Yeah, and, and and that's where we would encourage you because mm. we, we believe in this sort of like bottom up approach where you identify and solve your problems or talk about your issues, find solutions and then perhaps roll them out in a slightly wider context. So we support you wholeheartedly in this. This is our approach and um, you have our total backing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Um, we should probably just mention the Facebook group <gasps> one oh, more we time, should. shouldn't yes. we? As soon yeah. this will be cut yeah. off. There will be other runs of the English mm. for, as a medium of instruction. Mm. Mm. Uh, so do, MOOC, do join but, us. Yeah. So you can join us again. But a good yeah. way of staying in touch is through the Facebook it's group. It's the Facebook Although group. Although some of you don't yeah. have it. I know, I know. We've got and to. If you don't have it, find a friend who does. <laughs> and get them to join the Facebook yes. group. Yeah. But, um, you know, you could, um, for example, enrol for the next run and just perhaps look at um, the videos, the weekly videos again, if you can <laughs> bear looking at Rob and me again, and just see perhaps in reflection, the reflection, you know, the ends of each week, some of the things that have come up. That might be a way of just refreshing your, your ideas and so on. But we would like to keep in touch. Um, we don't see this as being the end of a journey. It's just a step along in individuals' journeys. Um, so it's not goodbye, is it? It's not goodbye. No, it's not goodbye. It's, it's sort of um, hope to see you again in the future and mm. um, do keep in touch with us. Absolutely. You know, if you wanted to ca contact us, we're very easily contactable because all you have to do is find the university webpage and mm. uh, we're there. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so we're very easily contactable if we can help people in any way. If you're yeah. thinking about courses and all sorts of things, you know, just mm. drop us a line. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So thank you again very thank much you. for all your contributions yes. and for staying with us until the end. Yes. And now it's a sad farewell. It's a sad farewell, Should yes. We do farewell? We'll do our farewells. Okay. See you next time. <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you.